ever beyond 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 broadcast through the wolf spirit media network please join us in the chat room at wolfspiritmedia.net be prepared to leave your belief systems behind as we go beyond teachers beyond gurus beyond duality ever beyond beyond Tune in with TalkStream Live, search for Ever Beyond. Also, you can call to listen on 712-432-9588. Selected archives are also available on my YouTube channel, Studio 9 Jam. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. And good evening, good afternoon, good morning. It is now um, 11 p.m. UK time, and... Uh, my guest tonight is, uh, from the, uh, the great, the great Britainness, um, not on the same island as myself, but, uh, still in, in the environ of the, uh, northwest, um, point of Europe that used to be the energy generator of Atlantis. Um, so, uh, without any more babbling from, from my end, uh, I'd like to welcome you on, Fiona Doy. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello, hello <laughs> JP. How are you? It's really, really nice to be here. Okay. So, um, yeah, j- just, uh, where, where exactly are you in, you're in Ireland, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm up in the north. Um, I'm in County Armagh. Ah. I'm in a little country village called Guildford. Guildford, not Guildford, but Guildford, G I L. Yeah, G I L. And are you, are you, is it a sort of a bothy like cottage, like my, my, uh, my own Celtic little cottage here? Um, not really, no, it's not a cottage. Um, it's kind of like, you know, like a, a couple of houses close together. Ah. But I'm still in the countryside, you know, there's a forest nearby, there's a river, so I really, I really like living here. Right, so you got your, your uh, the, the connection to nature quite uh, available. Yes, yes, yeah. that's always needed. Yeah, Absolutely. I don't think I could ever live in a city again. Fabulous. So yeah, I can I can now hear the 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 twin the the tweaks and twinges of the Northern Irish accent. Fabulous, <laughs> fabulous. Oh, so from Armagh to uh, to astrology. Now this is the 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 uh, subject level that we're we're going to be talking about today. Um, uh, but also about Fiona as well because. Well, my hope um, is is to have an array of experts in various fields that I can bring into the show. Um, and things have been happening in the temporal world, uh, which is, uh, you know, things like um, we've had these eclipses. We've had uh, super moons and red moons and green moons and all this moon. <laughs> Apparently there's green moon on four, on April the 20th, but that's a joke. Um, there's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a soft one, but, um, there's, uh, there's, there's a lot going on in our solar world, in our galactic world. And hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm looking at ways that people can, uh, how can I sort of ground out their experiences because people are really, experiencing astrology in terms of you know the the planetary influences um yet they're convinced it's like oh it's my mom it's my sisters or or you know it's the, the there are down to earth reasons but i believe there are a lot of energetic cyclic reasons uh and the, the these cycles are all concentrating at this moment so um so the idea is to have kind of weather reports or weather forecasts so that people can be prepared for things like well these full moons have been absolutely butt kicking haven't they yeah yeah the the eclipses um you know they were you know completely bonkers um i don't know about you but the first eclipse that we had there um in january it felt it felt very dark for me. Um, you know, I, I felt like there was a, an influx of kind of negative energy that, that came along with that. Um, the energy, you know, uh, was very unsettling. People were arguing. 
uh, even more so than usual. I mean, eclipses are, you know, they can bring unexpected events. You can't really, you know, predict exactly what's going to happen because they do seem to herald large, you know, important life events for people. But this one just felt very strange. And then the last one that we had, um, it seemed to me like the negative energy kind of lifted off a little bit. And in between those, you know, the weeks in between those two two lunar cycles, it was kind of like a no man's land. Um, I was seeing a lot a lot more spirit activity. Um, it just felt very strange. Did you experience the same thing, JP? Holy Lord. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I think a lot of it was uh, what we call the shadow. Um, all of the things that are denied um that are yeah buried for convenience uh, <laughs> and popularity and and all that stuff just kind of slap back up in my face and uh yeah, it it got pretty intense um and uh you know I, I, you know one might think oh i'm such a uh, well i don't really think that i'm such an evolved being um i don't think i'm much more evolved than than homer simpson myself but um <laughs> You know, people project stuff, but you know, I'm just a guy. I'm just like every every other guy, and you know, I like uh, you know um, things that everybody else likes. But it really brought up uh, very uncomfortable feelings. It was on a, on on one level, it was a cleansing, but on another level, it was it just felt like somebody uh, a grating, you know, <laughs> like being put through a grater. Yeah. Yeah, I I know exactly what you mean. Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, in the background of all of these lunar cycles, um, we have Jupiter transiting through Scorpio. So that Jupiter entered Scorpio in December and really, you know, it's it's asking us to examine the shadow side to to open our eyes. You know, we've had a lot of, you know, sex scandals etc in, in the media and people can no longer hide from themselves so it really it's it's a good thing but it can be incredibly painful um you know it's kind of like a, a psychological transit um people are, are looking back to their childhoods and becoming aware of how they affected affect their behavior today um you know i think it's because the energy of the planet is changing and we need to we need to evolve with it. So part of that is owning up to our own, you know, our own nonsense stuff. Yeah, stuff. <laughs> exactly. But you know, it, it is going to be a rough ride for for the rest of the year. I think it is going to be a bit of a rough ride. But by the end of this year, you know, things should be looking a little brighter. A year. Yeah. A whole well, year. You know, a whole year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Lord, it's only Pisces. All right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so uh, are there going to be, well, actually, do, do you want to go into greater detail about that? Um, you know, the cycle of this year, 2018. Um, so you say, did you say Saturn's moved into Scorpio? Uh, it's Jupiter has gone into Scorpio. Jupiter, Jupiter's in, Jupiter's in Scorpio. Christ. What, yeah. does, what will, what will that mean? Cause that's expansion of the, the deep, dark depths of doom and, doom and sex and death. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I mean, at the heart of this transit, we have transformation. So, you know, transformation is a hard process. Um, you know how difficult it is to wake up and see the reality of the the world around us. So, you know, the universe is kind of trying to encourage us all to do that. So Jupiter is a planet of good luck, good fortune, but it tends to exaggerate the sign that it's in. So, you know, in Libra, it was kind of really nice energy. A lot of people were in really loving relationships. You know, it was all, it was very harmonious. Um, very pleasant, I thought, for the most part. But as soon as Jupiter entered Scorpio, the energy totally changed. Um, but yeah, it's just asking us to examine ourselves, um, examine our lives, you know, 
it's it's very much a you know a a working process, but we'll we'll get there. We will get there. It is very painful, I have to say. Uh, I think everyone that you talk to these days is going through some kind of hardship. So, but it is for a reason. A reason. The reason yeah. being. Oh, I think it's that we need to evolve spiritually. So, you know, we, we're seeing in the news, uh, not that I watch in the news, but, you know, on my Facebook feed and people going, having fits over things. Um, there's a lot of violence. There's a lot of um, exposure of sex scandals. I think that's a really good thing. I don't think the violence is a good thing. Um, but there does seem to be an upwelling of, yeah, the humanity's shadow, uh, so to speak. And so this is going to be applying on our personal levels as well. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, how, how the cycles of the, you know, so we, we're going to, we're just now entering Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, um, as we, as we're going to go through the year, uh, you know, we're going through areas, et cetera. We, uh, uh, we're going to be the, 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 hmm, let's say the underlying keynote of the Jupiter, uh, Jupiter Scorpio and Saturn's in Capricorn, isn't it? So yes. do you want to talk about how that might affect us all during the cycles of this year? If that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, you know, the outer planets are are the slow movers, so they take a long time to change signs. And you know, you know, planets like Neptune and Pluto, they're so slow moving that they take a long time to even change degree. But the inner planets, such as the Sun, you know, Mercury, Venus, um, they they change signs quite frequently, so they affect us more on a personal level. Um, you know, for example, as you say, the Sun has just gone into Pisces. Um, I did notice the shift. I was taking an afternoon nap, which is really unusual for me. Uh, I had a nice dream. I woke up and the sun had just entered Pisces. So over the next month, we're going to find that things take a more a floaty kind of dreamlike state. Um, after that, of course, the sun progresses into Aries. Aries is the, the springtime you know, we feel invigorated, the, the flowers are coming out, um, the sun is shining, so we want to tackle things head on, we feel motivated, but the, the sleepy time, it's kind of, the sun in Pisces is kind of like a dream time, so yeah, I mean, astrology, the, the, the planets affect everyone. When I first started to study astrology, um, you know, I just thought, I was so fascinated by it because I could go back to my childhood and I could put in, you know, important dates of, of things that happened to me when I was a child and the astrology just totally lined up. Um, it's just, I think that everyone should learn astrology. It's such a useful tool in our everyday lives. You know, it's especially useful for relationships, compatibility, we can use it to track our health, you know, our careers, our money. It's just, to me, astrology is life. It's the cycles, and yes, indeed. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I have Pisces Sun um, and Aries Moon, uh, and I noticed on your uh, your your uh, your uh, Skype name is in fact Fiona Scorpio Moon, uh, yes. so <laughs> that's you laid out there. Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, indeed. Moons yeah. have been particularly uh, noticeable. I mean, people have been talking. It, you know, people never used to talk about uh, you know the moon cycles or anything, and and then a couple of years ago. People started talking about super moons and all these other perigees and apogees of, of, of the moon. And then, um, then we started getting this massive sequence of eclipses because when I was young, yeah, not so many decades ago, um, I was, uh, I was always impressed by, oh, there's an eclipse. Wow, this, you know, this doesn't happen every, every, you know, it, it was a very rare occasion for an eclipse to happen. You know, you don't get them like every, like, uh, well, but now 
we seem to be getting an eclipse every month or every couple of months, every few months. Um, now, as I've grown up and I've done the, done, done my appropriate research, it seems that, uh, the, um, angle of the, not the ecliptic, what's, whatever the, yeah, yeah, the ecliptic is the, the plane of the solar system. Uh, and as, uh, our orbits re, seem to be approaching this, this flat circular plane, even though it's not a flat circle plane, it's spiral, I know, but, uh, it's bringing everything into alignment a lot, a lot more than it ever used to. Um, is that part of, of, of a greater cycle? Do you want to, do you want to talk about that a bit? Well, you know, I think that I, yeah, I think that it is part of a greater plan or cycle, so to speak. Um, you know, you mentioned that it seems like we have eclipses more frequently and, more people are aware of the moon cycles and, you know, they, they talk about it more. You know, I think that's partly to do with social media is that information is more available to us now. Um, but also I do think that because people are evolving, um, you know, their awareness is shifting, their frequencies are becoming, you know, uh, they're getting higher. Um, I think that it's just becoming more natural to research these things. It's not seen as like a, you know, foolish information or mystic meg type stuff as it was before. I mean, don't get me wrong. A lot of people still, they, they don't understand it. Um, they think it's silly, but if you properly research astrology, uh, there's no denying its accuracy. That's true. I mean, the, the <laughs> I, I used to go to a, um, uh, a monthly astrology meeting uh, up in Findhorn uh, years ago when when I, I lived near there, and when uh, when the astrologer was uh, was talking about it, you know, giving the sort of general, oh, this is what the month's been doing, and I'm going nod, 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 tick, 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 nod, nod, nod. You know, everything he's saying, my, you know, I I, I literally went through every every everything that he was talking about about the, the energies of the cycles, and I think. Uh, I, you know, I've always wondered, is that because I'm more in tune with astrology that I'm actually being affected by it more? Do you know what I'm saying? Because the people, people, it, does, does astrology affect people even if they're oblivious to it? Yeah, I would, I would have to say yes, it does. Um, you know, my parents, they're kind of, you know, Christian, old, slightly old fashioned couple. Um, you know, I can tell my dad is also, my dad is a Pisces too. And I can tell when he is having some kind of transit because, you know, you can't, Pisces people can't really hide their emotions very well. I'm having so. a transit there. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. And, you know, my mom didn't really believe in it and didn't really understand it. But now she, you know, she asked me, is your dad having a transit? You know, there's something (laughs) affecting him. (laughs) Um, And they know about Mercury retrograde. I mean, I think that Mercury retrograde is discussed so much. People seem to just, you know, they want to know when is the next Mercury retrograde and they don't necessarily know anything else about astrology because they know that everything goes a little bit wonky over the retrograde. So, you know, I think it's just things like that that are causing, you know, causing the awareness. You know, it's very interesting that, that yeah, again, Mercury retrograde is is one of these things that has prop, cropped up years. And when I, I was, when, when I was about 30, what's that, 20 years, 20, 25, 28 years ago, oh God. Anyway, um, when I was about 30, I worked as an IT guy in, uh, uh, in a London institution called the Institute of Child Health. Every time there was a Mercury retrograde, because I had a friend who was studying astrology at the time, and he was telling me, oh, yeah, Mercury is going retrograde. And I was going, oh, yeah, BS, BS, BS. Um, but I would notice when he said, oh, yes, Mercury's just come out of retrograde. And then suddenly I get a whole bunch of um, repair calls. You know, I, I would service computers and, and people would, would bring in or they would call me up. Um, and I did start to notice that these things came in cycles and they seemed to co- co- correlate with, uh, the cycles of Mercury. So to me, that was, that was the first thing that alerted me to, 
something that is going on in astrology is affecting my own personal life. Yeah, yeah. There's no denying its influence, really. I mean, I think that, you know, scientific studies, you know, people have done studies about the, the full moons and the effect that it has on the emergency room or casualty department of a hospital. Um, there's also been some research that more murders and and kind of dark crimes are committed when the, the moon is new. So it's a dark moon. So it, it actually makes perfect sense, but... Still, we have these people that continue to deny that the planets have any influence over our lives. But, you know, I just say, let them let them get on with it. And I'll continue to use it as a very useful tool. Indeed. Uh, it's, so it's uh, looking at that, um, how astrology is kind of gradually becoming more and more popular. Um and I think, you know, also as a, as a, as an indicator that people are becoming more aware. And this is obviously part of the evolution that we're looking at. Uh, what are the, what are the governing cycles that are, that are influencing our evolution, Fiona? Do you know what I'm saying? What, are, what, you know, there, everything has, has a, has an influence, you know, Mercury, you know, messes around with, with, um, with your, uh, with, <laughs> with your electronics and communications, etc. Um, yeah. Jupiter to, to do with your happiness expansion, etc. So what is the evolutionary process going on? Yeah. Um, you know, it's the first planet would have to be Pluto. Um, Pluto is the great transformer. Um, I think Pluto was demoted to like a minor planet or, you know, something insignificant. A I, I was years very ago. upset about that. Yeah. Anyone that has Pluto, a strong Pluto in their chart or a strong Scorpio, you know, which is the sign that, that Pluto rules. Like, it's so ridiculous to think that it's being demoted because it's so intense to live with. Um yeah, I would say that Pluto and Neptune, I mean, all of the planets are, are helping us along, but Pluto and Neptune. Neptune is the planet of, of spirituality, of oneness with God. Um, you know, a, a positive Neptune transits, uh, they help to open our spiritual awareness. They help us to feel compassion for other human beings and living things. So those would be the main ones, I would say. So that's interesting. So um now th- th- and then there's this thing that they call the precession of the equinoxes. We're yeah. in the age of Aquarius these days, so it seems. Um can you speak a little bit about what your what your uh learn what what have you, you what, what have you learned about that cycle of things? Yeah, well, I, I know that, um, you know, the Vedic astrologers, uh, the Vedic astrologers use the constellations. Um, you know, I'm sure we've all seen that article on circulating around Facebook that says, you know, if you were born and, you know, at the end of December, your sign is now a phiacus. Well, you know, th- tropical astrologers like myself, we don't actually use the, the constellations. I mean, it can be used, but... Basically, tropical astrology divides the sky up into sections, so in, into 12 sections, which we then called the houses, and each house uh, rules a different life area. So, obviously, the signs will fall into those houses. Um, you know, it, it's still it's so accurate. Um, so... Aquarius, <laughs> the age of, um, the age of Pisces, intensely, yeah. uh, fanatical. Um, it's the, you know, it seems that everybody had some sort of, uh, uh, quest, uh, you know, religious, uh, kind of energy going on. What can you say about the movement towards Aquarius in terms of that? You know, do you think we'll get rid of religion altogether? 
having a more Aquarian, open, expansive view of things. Hmm. Yeah, that would be, you know, that that would be fantastic. Um, you know, it is a possibility. But, you know, all of the signs have their positive points and the not so positive points. And with Aquarius, you know, yes, it's a kind of, it's a very liberated sign. People should become more open minded. Um, you know, they'll be more spiritually evolved. So they'll be able to grasp these, you know, higher concept more easily. But my fear is that with Aquarius, we also have the stuff like artificial intelligence. You know, this kind of sci-fi weirdness that's that's actually coming into manifestation right now. Tell us more. Well, you know, you've, you I don't know a huge amount about it, but you've seen the stuff about, uh, you know, those those robots, um, the artificial intelligence, and they're they're creating it, and they've, you know, they've learned to open doors by themselves, and you know, just like kind of creepy, scary things. Well, in my mind, that's that's very Aquarian. It's very unusual. It's uh, you know, it's very scientific or sorry, science fiction type stuff. Yeah, I, and I suppose you know, um, when we were deeply in the middle of Pisces, all the ideas of sci-fi seemed to be completely, yeah, just a fantasy, you know, and it got grouped, you know, sci-fi and fantasy. Yeah, it's not, uh, and now we're discovering that. Things like the secret space program and um, all the other black projects that we've been that have been hidden from us have actually turned out to be completely real, much more even than we've we could imagine because there are things that we haven't seen in in sci-fi or that we're starting to see in sci-fi, like Stranger Things and uh, and these other time travel teleportation uh, movies that you know <laughs> that humanity's already been out there we've done a load of stuff out there um and uh we've even annoyed a few people and they're coming to um to to sort us out as it were uh we've th- there's so much that has been hidden from us in so all right so the question the question that is forming in my mind is uh how ready <laughs> is humanity to take on the truth is it, good, is it going to be a very fast process, uh, historically, or is it going to be, uh, metered out? Uh, uh, is it going to be, uh, are we, uh, is humanity going to be ready to receive the truth of the new age? I know that there's this thing in, um, in, uh, uh, Jack Nicholson is saying, you can't handle the truth. Can we handle it? I think so. I I, to- I totally believe that the majority of people are are ready to know the truth. I mean, uh, I I don't believe in hiding things just because that you know the person may not be able to handle it. Personally, for me, when I went through my awakening process, um, you know, it, it it suddenly everything made sense to me. Um, growing up, I always felt like. An outsider. I mean, I still do to a certain extent. Uh, I was born into a, you know, a pretty normal family. I went to, was kind of forced to go to church and Sunday school. It never made, made sense to me. You know, I, I rejected, I rejected all of that at a very young age. I never believed in it. Um, I had quite a lot of weird experiences when I was a child. Uh, I spent quite a lot of time in hospital due to various illnesses, but I remember having out-of-body experiences, um, astral projection. I remember seeing spirits whenever I was very young. So, yeah, I've had quite a lot of – I've had an unusual life. Um, so then a couple of years ago, after living in the States for a couple of years, I, I came back to Northern Ireland and – I had a Kundalini awakening at the same time, which just to make everything even more horrific, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I stumbled upon connecting consciousness, obviously with spirit. I started to listen. I started to research. And, yeah, it it was mind-blowing, but it made, it, it made so much sense to me. And it kind of validated, you know, things that I'd thought about, dreams that I'd had, 
Yeah, so I think that I think that most people are ready, and I think that they will be able to deal with it. So you mentioned your childhood. Let's talk about Fiona and how how you got here. You said you 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 were ill. What what kind of illnesses did you have? Yeah, um, I was born with a dislocated hip. So my parents didn't notice that until I was like two years old. Oh, wow. But yeah, so the the interesting thing is that I, I clearly remember a lot of my my last lifetime, and I actually died in a, a car crash where I went through the windscreen. So to me, it's it's just a little bit of evidence. Um, so I, I finally, you know, I had numerous operations on my leg. Uh, I spent a lot of time in hospital. Um, then I recovered from that, and I got type type one diabetes when I was six. Um, connect, you know, looking back, I had a strange experience shortly before I, I got the diabetes, but I clearly remember lying in bed and I could see a net around like an energetic net around my room um which i realized was around the whole planet so i i told my mom mom there's a, there's a net around everything you know what is it and she was like Shh, dear you're just tired go back to sleep but then looking back i realized what i was saying was you know the kind of trap around earth that prevents people souls from leaving so you saw that and what uh, did you uh, could you touch it did you see it did you feel it sense it what what were your different experiences of it yeah i could i could see it i could sense it um you know t- i am clairvoyant and claircognizant but i just remember seeing it and realizing that something was wrong i think it was around the same time i saw a hooded figure standing at the end of my bed um, a couple of times, you know, just a couple of, you know, that happened a couple of times. I remember being really freaked out. Um, but it wasn't long after I was became aware of the energetic net that I suddenly became very sick with diabetes. Um, I was sick for, I, I, I'm not sure exactly how long it, it took them to diagnose me, but I think it was more than a couple of weeks. Uh, by that point, I was very, you know, very ill. I was really thirsty all the time. I was just not doing well. But I remember having some kind of dream at that point when I was very sick, and I was I went into this strange dimension or strange planet. I don't know what it was. Um, it was very much like for anyone that's taken a shamanic journey, it's very much like the lower world. So, so a kind of un, un, underworld, again, ruled by Pluto. Exactly, yeah, ruled by Pluto. And, you know, my, my moon, my moon sign and my birth chart is in Scorpio. So that tells me that I'm not just exploring astrology and, you know, the truth movement and, you know, the occult and all of the things that are beneath the, stu- the surface. It's not just this lifetime that I've done that. I've done that in other lifetimes. And this is probably the culmination of all the different lifetimes with all the different learnings and skills that you couldn't learn in one lifetime alone, bringing them together to produce something that is uniquely Fiona Doig. I think you're exactly right, JP. I, I, I think so. It's, there's a point on the, on the birth chart and it's called, there's the North Node and the South Node. They are not planets, but they're hypothetical points uh, on the moon. And they are the, the karmic nodes, we call them. So the south node is where we've come from in our past lives um, and this lifetime. So it's kind of the skills that we've learned, that we've, you know, we've mastered. Mine is in Aquarius. So Aquarius is ruled by Uranus. Um, my Uranus is in Scorpio. So that tells me I have been, you know, I have been into all of all of this different stuff, into the occult and, you know, spirituality for many lifetimes. 
Um, interesting, interesting. Because um, you're saying South Node in because uh, I was just thinking, hmm, where's my North Node? Oh, it's in Leo. That means it's opposite Aquarius. And then you said, oh, my South Node is in Aquarius. So therefore, your North Node is in is in uh, is in Leo. Um, yeah. Thus, we seem to because that's uh, that's where mine is uh, now. Oh yeah, conjunct Pluto. If I if I'm correct. I'll, I'll wow. just have a quick check of that. So there is, you know, I, I understand these things that you're talking about. And, um, <sighs> you know, I keep saying, saying to people, I'm actually quite a shy person and I actually don't have much to say. And, um, I try to save it up <laughs> for my two hour show once a week because I'm, <laughs> I'm really not, uh, you know, uh, you know, you get people who have, uh, you know, the blarney, uh, as you might say in the UK, but, uh, you know, people who can speak for, speak for their country. Um, you know, I can't speak for myself sometimes. And, uh, and so it's very, it's a kind of slightly awkward position that I find myself in having to be put right in the middle of the stage with the limelight shining right on me and I'm going uh 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 a bit like uh Bruce Willis in the sixth it, no in the fifth element <laughs> when Ruby Rod puts the microphone in his face and he can't say anything he's just uh, uh. <laughs> so I feel like that sometimes it's like uh uh what is it that I'm here to say and the truth is you know whatever's coming from my heart I have no uh prediction about what's going to come out I just have to speak from speak from the heart um, do you want to talk a little bit, <laughs> just just for my indulgence and probably uh, people of my generation, uh, people who were born around my my area? Um, what what does uh, North Node in Leo, South Node in Aquarius signify? And does that mean that we're part of a a larger uh, you know group plan that is going on? Yeah, it, that's so funny. You know, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, um, that we actually have the same nodal axis. So it completely makes sense. And, you know, I, I am so similar to you in that I'm a natural introvert. Um, it doesn't really come naturally to me to, to speak to large groups of people or to be on the radio. You're saying the same thing about you, but you're exactly living your North Node. You know, JP, you, you're on the radio. Um, with Pluto conjunct your north node, uh, you're bringing truth to so many people and you're completely transforming their lives because you're a source of information um, that they're not going to get from anywhere else. So you're doing such a fantastic job. I'm sure with the south node in Aquarius, like myself, you always felt like a bit of an oddball you always felt like the kind of eccentric person that that no one else understood. You know, I'm I'm sure there were times in your life that you felt very lonely um, before you discovered people, other people who were like you. Well, only since doing the uh, do, doing the radio, so it's like that thing has been pushing me to get here so that I can find others who are like me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that to- that totally makes sense. Uh, you know, that's it's that's the case with me as well. I also think it's interesting that um, you know, obviously with the North Node in Leo, the the animal for Leo is the lion. So you have the 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 Lyran soul heritage, isn't that right? Yeah, there's that, and I've also I don't know if it's this uh, is it Skype that's got my avatar? Is it just my face or is it a lion face with glasses? Yes, it's it's the lion face. All right, because because what happened? All right, the the, the the true story of this is well, it's true. So yeah, it's just it's, it's, I don't need to lie or anything. But um, uh, I I had a photograph of my myself that my son took. Okay. Uh, and it, you know, okay, it's a very serious kind of somber looking face, you know, I don't know why. I just, yeah, resting face. And, um, uh, I saw this little picture of a lion and it, I thought, hang on a second, I, I recognize that face. And it, you know, it was angled the, the particular way and it just had this kind of, hmm, kind of look on it. And I literally used uh, Photoshop to size up the eyes, right? I just matched the, the two photographs on the eyes and faded one against into the other. And blow me if my face, my moustache and everything 
lined up perfectly. It looked just like the kind of cowardly lion from uh, The Wizards of Oz or something like that. Uh, or a kind of pseudo-intellectual lion. I don't know. But that's that's how that picture happened. It was just that. You know, I don't, I'm, you know, I'm not particularly lion-like. I suppose, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not aggressive like that, but I'm, I'm probably lazy like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that with the North Node in Leo, um, I haven't researched this very much, but for me personally, I feel very connected to the felines, um, you know, the, the ET felines. So possibly, People with North Node and Leo are, you know, one of their missions in this lifetime is to discover their their soul heritage. Um, I would make a good guess that a lot of them have this feline heritage. That's very interesting. And there's, um, you know, uh, there's this thing uh, you, you may have uh, seen my show about um, the Lyran connection, the Lyran trauma and all the various other shows connected with that. Um that, as you say, cat beings, lion beings, lyron beings, all of this business. Um, there's there's a phonetic in there, but it's also there's also, also something in the soul about it that that you think, hmm. yeah, this, this. So when I think of Lyra, I think of the 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 paradise lost. You know, when things were more harmonious back in the old days, kind of thing. Even though it was like billion years ago um and our journey back to that having experienced the the consequences of of having to deal with uh, another extraterrestrial race who weren't quite as sweet and uni- unified as we were yeah yeah i've li- i've listened to that and you know I, I do have some memories of my own but the the interesting thing I just I was just thinking um is that Jupiter in Scorpio, you know which we we will be going through for the rest of the year um it actually makes a very harsh aspect to planets or points in Leo so for the for the Lyran people um you know it may be that like I said earlier there's some kind of you know psychology you know you, you may need to work on yourself psychologically. Um, you may need to, to recognize that trauma, um, to recognize how it's come up in your life, you know, over and over again. It's something that you have to deal with this year. So for me, you know, that's what I've been doing. Um, I've been looking back at my life and recognizing my wounds. I've been looking at my past lives, including those not on this planet. Interesting. Interesting. Um, hmm. So I'm, I'm just uh, checking uh, out the chat room here, and uh, it's very lively, I have to say. Um, they love the accent there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, somebody's, somebody's looking at your page. All right, okay. So one of the questions that has popped up in the chat room is uh, actually regarding the eclipse last year, the one that sliced America in two. Now, uh, I, do you know about Sean David Morton? No, I don't. All right. Well, he was uh, a a guy I was producing um on uh, on in the weekdays on on another station and um uh that day of the uh, equ- eclipse he was arrested by uh the IRS um the tax service um <laughs> service yeah um uh, in in America uh as as you know. So um it was a very uh, important day, and, and, and I have to say, I was, it was a very sad thing. You know, I, re- I was really upset by it. But uh, uh, today, I got a message from him. Um, I just want to also, you know, put that out to people. There is I got uh, my my first uh, correspondence with him, and uh, I've asked him to uh, to write a blog kind of thing that I'll publish on the web and also read out on a Monday. So. Um, this is this was one of the first things you know the first really sort of big things that was close to me about that eclipse. It was very special, and eclipses are very long lasting and we're having like I was saying before dozens and dozens. so do you have anything to say about the 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 one that cut across America last year? Mm, you know I can't remember exactly which one it was because August I think it was August, okay, so um 
I, ca- I can't remember back to that point, but if it was in August, it was in Leo, right? Yes. Right, okay. Was it a, f- a full moon eclipse or a, a new moon eclipse? Um, it was, it would be the, it, it was a, a full solar eclipse that was, um, that cut a path. It really literally cut America, uh, uh, in two. And, um, and Sean was saying, you know, he's, cause he studies astrology as well. He was saying that, uh, this is going to have a, a profound effect on anybody who's within the shadow of the sun. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And with eclipses, you know, they, they bring massive events that affect us personally on such a massive scale, but also the world around us. So, you know, with the astrology of countries, because countries have a birth chart too, um, I, I can't remember exactly what the United States birth chart is like, but if I remember correctly, the moon sign for the U.S. is in Aquarius. So an eclipse in Leo would have opposed that. So what you're saying about the massive split, it just makes so much sense astrologically. Yeah, so uh, he's, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, so the moon was, in, the sun was in Leo and then the moon was in the current. Uh, no, the moon was in Leo because, yeah, sorry, I'm just muttering to myself <laughs> about that, <laughs> about that thing. Um, and, and as I said, it's, it's had a, it had a profound effect uh, kind of close to home. Um, and, uh, it's, it's like something's, well, Something's waiting. Um, my my feeling it's like uh, there's a, a a final oppression uh, from the dark side before everybody bobs up. I'm getting the feeling like you know uh, if you were trying to push a beach ball into water that the, it uh, it pushes something down. You can only do it for a short period of time before it comes back up again. Does the is that eclipse potentially having that kind of effect? Yes, uh, yes, very much so. Uh, that's that's the kind of feeling that I was getting in between the two, the last two eclipses. That that there was some kind of dark energy. Um, you know, it was kind of like a last attempt on their part to to bring humanity down again. But yeah, that's very much so. I mean, eclipses are really really potent. But again, with the last eclipse, um, I felt that the energy lifted. But this eclipse cycle is lasting until July. So really anything can happen between now and July. I think it probably will. So having introduced you, uh, do, I mean, first of all, do you have a website that, uh, people, that people can contact you? Do, do you do readings and stuff like that? Yes, yes I do. Um, my website is www.scorpiomoonkarmicastrology.com or you can find me on Facebook. My personal profile is Fiona Doig, D-O-I-G. Uh, I have a, a page on Facebook where I do astrological updates every couple of days. You can search for me Scorpio Moon, Karmic Astrology and Tarot because I'm also a tarot reader. So yeah, I, I offer birth chart readings, um, karmic astrology readings where I would focus on past lives, you know, your mission in life, which is your north node, the kind of lifetimes that you've had in the past, the kind of stuck karma, fixed karma, you know, you may have a blockage in relationships or just how you feel about yourself, emotionally speaking. So I can help you with all of that. Oh, that sounds like, um, can I, can I move in for a week to, to, to get the full business? <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you do guided tours? I, I mean, so there you are. You're in Northern Ireland. Ireland, the amazing, uh, the island. I love it. Uh, I've never been to the north. I've been to the south a couple of times in the west coast. Um, ancient sites in Ireland. Are you, a, are you a, a, a follower, aficionado of that sort of stuff? Oh yeah. Oh, I absolutely love that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I live in Armagh. There's a site called Navan Fort. Um, you know, that used to be that the high seat of, of the kings. It's got such an incredible energy. 
me and my partner, we go there all the time. Um, the Hill of Tara, it's just over the border. It's got, actually, the first time that I went there, I had a very strange experience. Um, I, I walked, the Hill of Tara is, you know, it's, it's a very grassy area. It's another ancient site where I think the, the kings used to be initiated. Um, as soon as I walked onto the land, I felt like I was walking through some kind of energy field. Uh, all I can explain is that there was a strange buzzing all over me. Um, and then I actually started to cry, which is really unusual for me. It's just the the emotion of the, the land just overwhelmed me. But there are so many of these places in Ireland, you know, having lived in, in other countries, well, the United States, um, the energy of Ireland is very special. It's very intense. Indeed. Intensely beautiful. Uh, I, uh, I live in northern Scotland. Uh, have you heard of Findhorn? No, I haven't. All right. It's, uh, it started in the 1960s. It's a new age community. So I live sort of not far from there and they, they set up a Steiner school, which is the reason why myself and my ex-wife moved here in the first place. Um, but, uh, where was I going with that? Oh yeah. Living in Scotland. Uh, it's, it's, I never expected Scotland to be so beautiful. I never expected Scotland to be so welcoming. I never expected anywhere. I grew up in the middle of London. <laughs> it's like the opposite of this wonderful energy, except that it rains all the time and, um, there's, there's some very strong winds, but you know, you can't complain. <laughs> so. Uh, the, you know, I, I went to Ireland um, last year. Actually, I, I did a little tour of Southern Ireland, uh, a very random tour, but it was uh, a great thing to do. And uh, we went past some various, uh, you know, well-known sacred sites like uh, Blarney Castle, but we never really went there. We just kind of felt our way around. It was a very interesting journey. Um, Ireland... As I was saying, it feels a lot like Scotland. The, you know, when you go through the, the, the roads and there's, uh, dry stone walls, uh, either side and all the trees are covered in, in lichens and moss. Um, it's, that's, that's the kind of countryside we have here and, you know, hilly little up and downs. Um, that's, uh, so it, it felt very much like a home from home and indeed, uh, I believe that it all used to be one place then was split apart at various times. Um, there's a place that they call High Brazil. Have you heard of anything about that? N no, I haven't. Okay, well, next time you're on Google Google Maps or Google Earth, zoom out a little bit. And just go over to the northwest, and you can see something very interesting there. There's a crater with a great big thing in the middle of it. Like, you know, it could be a big lump of a, a lump of something that smashed into the to the ground. And I believe that's that's part of the destruction of Atlantis. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely check that out. Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, Irish and Scottish people are very similar. Um, the landscape is so similar. Like you say, it's, it almost just seems like they used to be, they used to be one. Um, I think it was I, uh, Simon Parks that said that Ireland was a, a piece of Atlantis. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that Britain as a whole was like the eastern edge of uh, the east end of Atlantis. Oh, that fits. As I grew up in the east end of London, yeah. Uh, so, so here we are at the east end of Atlantis. Um, n now getting almost back to a level of uh, understanding and technology that we had ten thousand years ago. Um, and uh, and here we are, kind of rebuilding our brains from being shattered. In the same way that the the planet has been shattered like that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, I think that Ireland is Ireland is such a magical place, and I know I'm biased. I'm I'm from Ireland, but 
actually for for a long time, you know, I actually really tried to get away because, you know, I'm from Northern Ireland. I'm sure most people are familiar with the troubles that we had, the terrorism. You know, it was a pretty horrific place to grow up in the 1980s, which is when, you know, I was a child. So for many years, I, I tried to move away to different places. I always came back. I had to come back for one reason or another, but I have actually fallen in love with Ireland. I realize what a blessing it is to live here. Um, it's so, you know, it's such a shame that so much of our culture was, you know, banned and, you know, they weren't allowed to speak the Irish language. Um, our mythology was, you know, basically, you know, the, the Druids didn't write anything down. So the only stories that we have came from Christian monks. Um, it's a shame that we, a lot of our, you know, our culture was lost that way. But there's such a big spiritual movement in Ireland. Um, you know, like I said, I've lived in America. I lived in Detroit and St. Louis. But I just feel like people in, in Ireland are so much more in tune with spirituality. There are so many spiritual people um, in Ireland. I've had the pleasure of meeting many of them. And I think there has to be so many more than there there are in other countries. Um, it's just a, it's an, a magical place. It certainly is. So we're at the top of the hour, Fiona. It's rushed by. Um, I'm going to play some more Dire Straits because I seem to be playing my Dire Straits collection today for some reason. I don't know. Maybe the world's in Dire Straits. This is uh, a, a song that my band used to play with me, and uh, so I love playing those little guitar licks of his. Uh, this is Six Blade Knife. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Yes, you're listening to Wall Street Radio. This is JP. It's just past midnight in the U of K. And I am speaking with astrologer from Northern Ireland, Fiona Doig. Welcome back, Fiona. Thank you, JP. Did you enjoy your tea? I enjoyed my tea and my six-blade knife experience. It's It's been a long time. I have to listen to some of the old tapes. Uh, they weren't always that good, but um really uh, enjoyed the having a little twiddle. So... Meanwhile, uh, <laughs> so my girlfriend is talking about Lilith, and okay. uh, she has Lilith in Sagittarius. Do you want? Do you know much about Lilith? Tell us about Lilith. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, there are two Liliths. There is an asteroid, and uh, there is a, a hypothetical point. Um, I think it's a hypothetical point on the moon or between the moon and the earth. So basically Lilith oh, so is your is birth. it sort of like the Lagrange point where the the gravity balances or something? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So basically um we can look at both of them. You know, it's kind of a, a similar energy. Lilith and Sagittarius, so Lilith in your birth chart shows where you have your Lilith Lilith type energies. Um, usually to do with rebellion, you know. Lilith is quite dark. <laughs> rebellion. Um, <laughs> that's one of the things, you know. Lilith has become this kind of uh, feminist icon. Um, so, yeah, you could say that she's rebellious. You know, that's quite a mild way of putting it. But Lilith and Sagittarius would be someone who would be uh, extremely hard to fool. Um, you know, th- their belief systems are very different to other people's. Um, their spiritual practices would be seen as, you know, way beyond the norm, quite sh- quite shocking to some people. Um, this is a, a person who is not afraid to speak their truth. Um, those are just some of the things that it could represent, but we have to look at the, the chart as a whole. Um, and what it does to the other planets. Yeah, pretty spot on from what I can see. Yeah, um, I have no idea where my, uh, where my... So is that the Black Moon Lilith you're talking about, the uh, that Lagrange-type point? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, you know, with, with points and asteroids, um, 
I think points are are more important, you know, than than asteroids. Uh, to be honest, I I think asteroids are useful, but what I see in a, in an asteroid, I can also see that in a, the immediate chart. Um, asteroids can give us information, you know, that's not available in the immediate chart, such as a name. For example, there is an asteroid named after me. It's, you know, called Fiona. I look, if I look that up in my fiance's chart, it's actually sitting in his seventh house of relationships. So, you know, there are some uses, but I wouldn't focus too heavily on, on the asteroids. Oh, interesting, interesting. Because, of course, the asteroids are just bits of Maldek, uh, as we were talking, as uh, Simon was talking about earlier on. And, uh, again, another uh, favorite topic of mine is the, uh, the the planet that all those asteroids were made of was uh, this uh, reptilian base, it appears, as uh, he described it today. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so... It's kind of a, you know, it's, it's original energy has been broken up, um, and, you know, changed dramatically. So, yeah, I tend not to focus on the asteroids. They are, as they are bits and pieces of a, a planet that doesn't exist anymore. Actually, um, actually, that's quite an interesting concept, isn't it? Does that mean that somewhere, it, like, is there a, like, yeah, is Maldek a missing, a missing planet from our uh, astrological perspective? Is there something great, big, and missing from our world? It seems so. I mean, I, I don't know an awful lot about Maldek, um, just what I've listened to, you know, to Simon explain, but I don't know if I would describe it as missing, but it's changed. It's different. You know, whatever it was that, that Maldek represented is it has now changed and is split off into multiple different energies rather than one large concentrated energy. Interesting. It's called Maldek and uh the uh the 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 names that the astrologers give to planets like Mars and Saturn uh are and Pluto also are are known as maleficent, which is the you know, they're not beneficent. This is the op- the opposite there. Um so there's there's these uh so perhaps it was an influence in our solar system that we could do well with with being less in our dimension and maybe fragmented such as it is. Yeah. Um yeah, so its its purpose has changed. Um you know, it's I I'm a firm believer that that everything, you know, has happened for a reason, so perhaps it's it's you know, it it marked a change in consciousness. Interesting, because, well, you know, uh, it was a, a, the Pleiadian mission to destroy a planet in our solar system that was essentially a, a, a reptilian air base, or a reptilian space base, um, which, uh, destroyed the, um, the, they basically had a bunch of death stars, like in Star Wars, they had a bunch of these death stars that a, anybody would come through this, uh, portal gateway, uh, that our sun is, um, they would, if they weren't friendly to the reptilians, they would destroy them. So it was, uh, it was causing a big blockage at the ed- edge of the galaxy as we go out towards the Taurus side. Um, so yeah, so anyway, that's the story of Maldek and it, so it's a kind of, it was a good thing that it got blown up in a, in a way, uh, on, on a larger perspective, but it was a bad thing that it was such a, a, a traumatic experience. Yeah, yeah. So now we have a a lot of little asteroids to look at instead. <laughs> um, you know, the, the asteroids are very interesting because, you know, a lot of them are are named after gods and goddesses and you know historical figures and and anything really. So it's quite surprising sometimes when you plot them into your chart what they, you know, what what you come up with. For example. I have a very strong connection with the Egyptian goddess Sekhmet. Um, you know, she's the, the the lady with the lioness's head. Um, obviously a, a feline, you know, the extraterrestrial feline. So I have a very strong connection with her. Um, I've had, you know, I've, I've had past life experiences with her. 
and I there is an asteroid named after Sekhmet, and I plotted it into my chart, and it's actually conjunct my Mars, so it's conjunct the god of war in my chart, but it's also conjunct my ascendant. Um, people have told me that I look slightly feline, um, and technically it is in my 12th house, which would be my past lives. That's interesting. And, uh, yes, so, birth charts, um, I've been discussing mine. Um, uh, it's quite, you know, it's quite, uh, I, I suppose, you know, <laughs> you know, if you give out your birth date and time and place, you're basically opening yourself up to anybody who can read the, the chart to exactly how to manipulate you and how to kind of behave with you to make you feel good or bad or whatever. Um, it's kind of a really personal thing, yet people toss it around. You know, we're, we're always asked, you know, when's your birth, your date of birth, when you know people are interested in your birth ch- chart and things like that. Um, yeah. Do you, I mean, yeah, w- w- do you want to talk about birth charts and how you read them? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, so, well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because astrologers usually do not reveal their date of birth on their, you know, social media profiles because they don't want anyone looking at their charts. Um, exactly. When I look at, yeah, when when I look at someone's birth chart, it's pretty much I, I can look into their soul. I can see, you know, everything about their personality, including the things that they probably don't admit to themselves. Um you know, I can I can look at their health, I can look at their childhood, their career, and I can also look at their deepest wounds, you know, their deepest source of pain. So, yeah, it's very revealing. Um, you know, it's it can be used for negative purposes. You know, like you say, someone can figure you out and they know how to, you know, they know how to win you over or they know how to pick an opportune time to, you know, to, to mess with you. But, you know, we have the sun in the birth chart. That's kind of like our, our general personality. The sun is not always comfortable. Um, my son is in cancer in my birth chart. And, yeah, I, I am quite cancerian in some ways, but I'm not completely comfortable with those energies because it makes the square to my Pluto. Um, then we have Venus. Venus rules love, money, pleasure, um, you know, and then we have Mars, you know, it can, it rules our aggression, our temperament, our drive. Mars can also give me an insight into someone's sexual preferences. So there really is, you know, I, I can read everything about a person by looking at the chart. There's nothing hidden. Um, oh my God, you know everything now. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I, I can also look at the astrology chart um, to get information about past lives. Uh, you know, I think it's it's kind of it's a waste to limit a, a reading to just looking at this lifetime because I feel like our past lives continue to influence us. Uh, a lot of our, you know, our problems can be solved by looking into the past as well. So I would look at Saturn, I would look at Pluto, I would look at the moon, because the moon tells me what, you know, the kind of personality that they've built up over lifetimes. So it's so useful. I I wish everyone would would learn astrology. It's such a useful tool to have, which is probably why they try to make a joke out of it, um, because they don't want people to have that much control over their own lives. Indeed. Indeed. So, yeah, that's a, so. That's a very good point. Uh, I believe that people should know about astrology. I believe people should know about the rays as well. I read the seven rays, uh, which are like, you then. I mean, astrology is a condensation of multiple streams of energy, and um, the the twelve signs to me are like the twelve notes in the uh, chromatic scale of music, um, and that you can, you actually get down to working with just five. You know how people can like work with five elements, 
Um, and that's, that's, res- that's, that's connected with the, uh, the pentatonic scale, uh, which is like Mr. Knopfler was using, uh, earlier on. That's all pentatonic scales, uh, of the, the, uh, the guitar work that he was doing. Um, all about a condensation of energies that come down to essentially a three in one, uh, kind of energy. Like the primary colors, red, green, and blue. Where am I going with this? Have you studied the, uh, connections of frequency with astrology? I haven't studied it, but just intuitively I can, I can pick up on the, the different frequencies. Um, it's, you know, when I think about astrology, when I think about certain signs, I actually see them as colors. So I, I'm not sure if anyone else does that, but some of the colors have a higher frequency than others. That's interesting. So when you say you see the colors, it's, there's a texture. Isn't there? Yeah. Do you want to talk? Do you want to like delve in and and you know talk about the the different you know the different levels of colours and and specific signs? So you know Aquarius, etc. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, just for example, Capricorn. You know, Capricorn is a very earthy sign. It's it's Capricorn people are very industrious. They're very hard workers. You know, they're they're ambitious. But when I, it's such an earthly type energy. It's ruled by Saturn, but it feels to me like it's a very dark brown color. Um, and it feels quite, quite a heavy. It's like quite a heavy sign. Is, do you see something similar, JP? <laughs> Black. <laughs> Black, okay. <laughs> well, you know, um, so Capricorn is, is, uh, you know, uh, black and yellow kind of, the, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, sometimes it's yellow, but most of the time it's black. Uh, I haven't had a good, uh, well, no, l- let me say, my early life, it wasn't, you know, Capricorn wasn't good, um, for me. And I suppose that would be the time that Saturn was in Capricorn in, in my sign, and then it may have mo- moved out. It was a 28th. I'll, I'll have to work that out. Um, but here it is coming back. Um, and it's so for me and, and my generation, the Saturn return is kind of slightly delayed. So does that mean it's going to come back with more of a bam than it would have? Or do you think we've been kind of slowly working it out, thinking, all right, Saturn returns coming, better get me act together. And it's, it's, you know, coming on slowly so that we can handle it. Um, well, the second Saturn return is generally quite, uh, it's easier to deal with than the first one because Saturn is the planet of maturity and, you know, by your second return, you're usually fairly mature. Yeah, um, think. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that doesn't apply to Piscean people. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Generally, it's it's an easier energy to deal with than the first one. The first Saturn return is pretty horrendous. I think everyone can agree. So that happens around the age of 27 to 30, you know, which is when people start to settle down. They start to question their lives. What am I doing with my life? Um, they get karmic lessons around that time, depending on what sign Saturn is in. So... For me, my, my Saturn is in Libra, and my my tests have always been around relationships with other people. So, yeah, and your moon is in Aries, isn't that right, JP? Oh, yes. I see right. sun, Aries moon. Right, okay. So Saturn makes a, a square to your moon then, which is a harsh aspect. So... You know, it, it may feel like at some point in your Saturn return, you feel a little bit stuck emotionally, but, you know, it, it will pass. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I'm, I'm, uh, I have a hobby, which is, uh, microelectronics. You know, I like to, I like to solder stuff and put uh, electronics to uh, circuits together. And last week, I, I, I 
finished um, a very uh, quite a, it's like doing a really sort of thousand piece jigsaw puzzle, you know, just soldering these things in. But it's a, a device called an oscilloscope, which allows you to see waveforms. And uh, I previously built a signal generator and an amplifier. And uh, my friend brought it, uh, a little loudspeaker. So we hooked the whole thing up together. All these little projects that I've been doing for over the last year. Uh, just, just I, again, I just did them because I enjoyed soldering. I like soldering. It's a very relaxing and focused thing to do. I know, it's like everybody's got their hobbies. Anyway, um, it, uh, it's been part of my, you know, working life as well, because I used to do lots of soldering uh, to do it. It's probably, you know, I've got lead poisoning. That might make sense. Anyway, because <laughs> solder is, you know, you, you're basically melting and perhaps vaporizing um, uh, a lead compound, so I've probably got a good deal of, um, you know, Capricornian brain damage. Anyway, uh, so I finally put all these things together, and what does this thing do? It makes waves, and then we put a speaker in it, it would rise up and down. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, and uh, so we were experimenting with frequencies and, and uh, seeing it all displayed on this little screen. It's fascinating. So... <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if that means, uh, you know, what, what part of, uh, what part of my astrology, uh, is that, but I do have a, a tendency to gather random, randomly associated, I mean, not, you know, randomly associated things to put them together. Um, and I've always, I was, you know, I, I, uh, Things talk to me, okay? <laughs> it's like, uh, I'll pick something up, or, you know, certainly crystals talk to me, um, and, uh, they, they say, uh, hello, can you pick me up? And, uh, uh, okay, you can put me down now, um, because they want to move around. And I, I have that attitude that things like that have intelligence and purpose and intent, and I can assist them, um, in their, in their travels around, around the, uh, the 3D world. Um, what that, you know, so I don't, I don't know what part of why I'm telling you this. Well, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but, uh, it's something to do with assembling things that don't normally, uh, associate. Um, and that's why I'm looking for, you know, I'm looking for astrologer. I'm looking for people who have, uh, psychic sensitivities and things like that because we're currently moving through uh, an unknown area. And if you were driving at night and you didn't have a set of headlights on, you'd be crazy, wouldn't you? And I yeah. feel that we're, uh, the, the Wall Spirit radio thing is like a ship. Um, and it's got, uh, you know, it's got a little, uh, what do they call it? A uh, wheel room or, you know, a cabin somewhere, <laughs> which is, you know, this is where I'm sitting. Um, but we need to be able to see ahead. We need lookout. We need, um, some kind of ability to sense the energies just before they hit us so that when they're not taken as a shock, they're not taken personally. Cause this is how most people experience this stuff. They take it personally and that's when we get trouble. That's when we get war. So. Yeah. Do you feel this fits in with with how Fiona is? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, with astrology, we can track the bad times. Um, we know when something challenging is going to come up. Um, but we also know when it's going to end. We know from the planet and the sign the type of energies that we're going to be dealing with. So, uh, yeah, we definitely becoming aware of these things before before it happens is, you know, it, it allows us to prepare for that. Um, for example, I've had some tough, they're called astrology transits. Um, you know, so when Jupiter went into Scorpio, I realized that that was going to form challenging aspects to a lot of my own charts. Uh, I realized that it was going to be challenging, so I prepared and, you know, like I said, I, I know what it's going to end. It's going to end in this December. So to, to be able to help everyone that way would be excellent. Well, uh, I can't say we can help everyone, but we can help 
whoever's drawn to come and listen to this this radio station mp3 streaming thing listening to these youtubes if you're listening on youtube hi everybody yeah. i don't normally say hello to the youtubes um uh mm. because they you know it's like people ask me to put, put them on youtube and it wasn't you know it wasn't a, a thing that i said oh, i'm gonna tell everybody on youtube and um it's just a a matter of uh of um uh, people have, have requested it so it kind of has grown organically and I think it's going to further grow organically. We've got more producers and, uh, uh, and we've sort of got some great people in the chat room and they're, we're building forums. And today I saw some mugs. I thought, yeah, it's like a mug with my own show on it. That would be so cool. Maybe, it, yeah, maybe it'd be a good thing to, um, to send to guests who have been on our show. Yeah. Hey, if anybody remembers, Fiona gets the first mug. Of the uh, Ever Beyond series, that was that's going to be. You fancy that? Does that sound <laughs> yeah. good? Excellent. Oh yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, looking ahead, you know, for for the rest of 2018, you know, obviously, astrology changes every day. I mean, even the moon changes signs every every two days. But we do have quite, you know, some significant transits coming up this year which everyone does need to be aware of. Uh, we have a Mars retrograde. I think everyone is familiar with Mercury retrograde when Mercury appears to be moving backwards throughout the skies. And all of the things that Mercury rules, such as communication, uh, short-distance travel, you know, it becomes messed up. So you have an argument with your spouse, um, your car breaks down, you get a big virus on your computer, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But Mars retrograde, um, it, it doesn't happen as often. Uh, it's in Aquarius, I think. So we need to, you know, I think that there, the dark side is potentially going to be cooking something up around that time. Um, uh, we have a Venus retrograde as well, I think, towards the end of the year in Scorpio. Hang on a second. When was the Mars retrograde? Uh, I'm not sure about the exact date. I will have to check that again. But the Roughly? Mars retrograde... Uh, I'm th- I think it's around the summertime. Okay. I think July, possibly. Okay. Um, it's in... Yeah, it's around the spring or summertime. But, you know... Mars retrograde is tough. Uh, for one thing, we can feel like we're totally zapped of energy. Uh, the last, Mar- the last Mars retrograde, I felt so tired. It was, you know, people's physical health will be affected. Um, I think that things are, are more likely to happen behind the scenes. You know, maybe the dark side are cooking up some, you know, nasty attacks. Um, as it's going to be an Aquarius, it could involve, you know, anything from artificial intelligence. You know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, we need to be prepared for that one. Um, with Venus retrograde, you know, it's, it's more to do with relationships and romantic partners. Uh, exes can come back, you know, for like a final karmic test. You know, you could even meet someone that you have a very strong past life connection with. So, important things going on this year, for sure. Oh, dear. So, I've actually just Googled um, 2018 Planetary Retrograde, and uh, on a findyourfate.com, um, it's given us the dates. So, we're getting, um, uh, now, it's the May, for the Mars Retrograde, starts May the 12th. And, uh, leaves on, uh, um, or, or, well, finishes August the 27th when it goes direct. Um, obviously, June the 26th, it goes retrograde, goes direct on August the 27th. So, for the month between June and August, um, things are gonna be a bit grindy. So, do you think that would be, uh, how would that relate on a planetary scale? You know, I can, you can see so much, you know, the sort of apparently Martian activity, certainly martial activity. Do you think, what, what do you, what do you think of Mars, Mars retrograde on a, on a global scale? 
Yeah, you know, on a global scale, the Earth could be hit with some very unusual energies that that cause us to be drained of energy. Um, you know, possibly the something nasty may be released in the the chemtrails that we haven't experienced before. Um, there may be important political deals happening which are, you know, kept in secret that completely change the course of, you know, the, the course of things. There are a lot of possibilities, but, you know, it will not become clear until Mars goes direct. But certainly around that time, we need to be taking extra caution with our health. So the usual stuff like getting enough sunlight, um, really trying to stick to a healthy diet, supplementing vitamin D, uh, you know, fresh air, meditation. It's even more important during a Mars retrograde. Okay, so get some uh, glass bottled water, people, <laughs> if you can. Um, uh, do something or get a water filter between June, the end of June and the end of August. So more or less the uh, the entirety of July and August, we're going to be suffering from this thing. Um, and, you know, Cliff High has spoken about unknown energies from space uh, that have been predicted in his uh, web bot uh, uh, techno, what is it, technomancy, I think. <laughs> Go on. Um, so that's June to August, people. It's going to be getting pretty toasty there. This is This is the Mars retrograde. Well, thank you for that, uh, Fiona. So, and then, um, so Venus is coming in, uh, uh, starting about September the 2nd and then going retrograde October the 5th and then uh, goes direct November the 16th. So that's, again, quite a period, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the energies are intense for sure for the rest of the year. You know, on top of that, we have Mercury going retrograde soon. Well, not, I think it's in March. Um, we have, you know, the, the usual transits. So I think it's going to be helpful for everyone to kind of get into that, you know, mindset now that they need to start, you know, eating more healthy, um, you know, and prepare themselves mentally to, to possibly go through, you know, go, go through some kind of issue. I think because you know, because Mars retrograde is going to make a, a pretty harsh aspect to to uh, Jupiter and Scorpio, there's going to be more of that kind of psychology, you know, childhood analysis thing come up for people, um, self-awareness. So, you know, a lot of that does involve going through trauma again, you know, whether you speak about it to your therapist or, you know, a friend. Um, it can be pretty challenging, but it's definitely a useful thing to do. So yes, up ahead stuff. Um, so what what else is what else is going on? Is there, so there's these retrogrades, and these ret- retrogrades you know, force you to look at things in a different way, perhaps take a different perspective, take a breath, and give everybody a break. Sometimes. We just need to stop and look at the situation from a higher perspective. Go hiking up a hill or something like that. Yeah. Go go ahead. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the retrograde is about going over stuff that we may have missed. It's giving us a chance to revisit something. So it is useful, but... You know, it, it can be a time when life slows down, so we have less ec- external influences, which gives us more time to reflect, to meditate, to, to kind of calm. Um, so, you know, people d- tend to dread them, but they are useful. They happen for a reason. Uh, some are more challenging than others. Well, you know... What, what I'm, uh, I think what I'm, I'm feeling towards is that there's, uh, something that is going on. Like you're saying, you know, this is the last year of this kind of, um, it'll all be over by December. When did it all start? And what is it, what is the, the all? 
Yeah, well, you know, when I say all, I, do, I don't think it's all going to be over. No, no, I don't, I don't yeah. know. But the, the, the kind of, the feeling of being put through a mincing device and then sliced uh, in the, into a zillion pieces and then trying to put yourself back together again, cube by cube. Yeah, I when know that feeling. <laughs> um, you know, I think that, honestly, by November, December, we're going to notice a difference. We're going to start feeling better. Jupiter's going to go into Sagittarius. The energy will feel like it's lifted. So until then, we're going to go through this deep psychological transformation that we're going through, the spiritual transformation, revisiting this trauma, um, you know, being hit with these these dark energies that make us feel like, you know, we're just made of stone or lead at least that's the way that i've been feeling um you know i've I've suffered from psychic attacks and you know pretty frequently since i became awake and started practicing astrology and spreading my truth so you know it's it's a tough thing to deal with but when did it all start i think it's it's been an ongoing process for all of us um especially within the last five years but this year, it's intensified so much. So um, we're, get, we're getting some questions in. Um, Fiona from Tim Good. What challenges do you see on Trump's... Donald Trump? Have you done his chart? Do you see his challenges? Uh, yeah, I've taken a look at his chart. Um you know, Donald Trump is such a controversial figure. Um, there are so many people that just, they, they absolutely despise him. They, they hate him just because they think it's what they're supposed to do. Uh, I think Donald Trump is, you know, he has no filter. He has Moon and Sagittarius, uh, Sun and Gemini. Moon and Sag people, they speak their truth. They're known to be blunt. Um, I think that you know, that's a positive thing for him. This is a man that's ruled by no one. You know, he's a multi-billionaire. No one can bribe him. So he's speaking his truth. He's he's fighting against the dark forces. You know, someone with, with Sun and Gemini could tend to be a little bit fickle at times, but he does have a fixed ascendant. His rising sign is in Leo conjunct Mars. So he's not afraid of a challenge, as we can see. Um, Leo people are, are usually very, you know, honorable. But I can't really remember the rest of his chart. Cool, thank you. And, and Ray's, Ray Rowe um, asks, uh, can she do a reading on you, lol? Um, do you, I mean, do you do instant readings or, or is, is the instantness uh, come through the cards? Um, the instantness, I can do instant readings, yes, um, you know, but I do, you know, I can look at someone's birth chart and I can say, yes, you know, you're like this, you're like that. I do prefer to have time to prepare because I read the charts differently to a lot of astrologers in that the, the symbols on a birth chart, the planetary symbols, almost act as a sigil or a gateway for me. And I, I, I stare at it and, you know, I get a flood of information in my mind. You know, I get birth, uh, I get past life information. So I do like, didn't need to be in a certain mindset to do that. Um, but I can do instant readings, yes. Oh, brilliant. So, um, yeah, so I don't want to put you on the spot there, but, uh, you can you can read anything you like. Uh, I was just I was actually looking for my chart because I've got it somewhere. Um, uh, but uh, yeah. Okay. So, so much. Yeah. For, all right. So go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, we can take a look at your chart if you want. Um, what's if you don't mind giving your birth? I'm going to give it to the world now, so everybody's going <laughs> to oh, there he is. Oh, we can do it. They all yes. Anyway, um, <laughs> March eighteenth, nineteen sixty one. Okay, let me just stick that in my software. Yeah, and, and what time were you, were you born at? Um, about a quarter past eight. It was in GMT in London. Down okay. in London. So that's AM? 
a PM. PM, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, I I always thought, you know, because I've always been a kind of night guy. Uh, I'm, you know, night bird as they call them. Um, but that was because I was born in the evening. You know, born I was born in the dark. Does, yeah. Uh, any ideas on that? Yeah, yeah. I think that you know, I, I was born at three thirty a.m. and I am a bit of a night owl. And actually, 3.30 a.m. is around the time that I would naturally fall asleep, you know, if I didn't have stuff to do the next day. Mm. So, you know, I suppose that you, you would like the spring as well, JP. You would prefer it over the winter. Uh, I like the spring very much. And this place is the best place for spring. April, May, what the best months ever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, so I am looking at your chart. I've got it, I've got it pulled up here. It's quite interesting. Um, the first thing that I notice is that you have Mercury in Pisces. Um, so Mercury, you know, that's your thought processes, your intellect, the way that you communicate. Um, I would say that you're someone who is, you know, very intuitive to the point of being psychic. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. some uh, I get, I keep getting surprised. Because I'm, I'm saying things that I'm like I've never heard this stuff before, and <laughs> it's coming out of my mouth, and and uh, people are uh, saying, "Wow, that's really spot on." Wow, I thought about that yesterday. Wow, somebody like you know, all the time people do this, uh, and I'm just I'm just trying to. Sometimes I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> Sometimes it's just trying to be funny, uh, just to keep the you know the whole thing uh, light and everything. But. Um, uh, I'll say things that come off the top of my head or that they, they come straight out. Um, and, yeah. uh, it sometimes can be inconvenient for people, uh, as well. <laughs> it's not, not very polite, you know, or a bit tactless, <laughs> you know, but at the, at the same time, it's some, yeah, most of the time it's what's needed at the time, I believe. So that's why I'm, I am the way I am. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's funny because, you know, I, I mentioned that my dad, is uh, he has Pisces son also. Uh -huh. And, you know, you can be thinking of the most random thing and, my you know, you keep it to yourself and my dad will say it. Yeah. You know, he he will just blurt it out. So it's like a claircognizance mm -hmm. that they that Piscean people have. Um, yeah, so you also Get have... Get out of my head. No, sorry. <laughs> I'm not in your head. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, with Pisces, Pisces people can, they need to be careful about their spiritual boundaries because, um, they need to protect themselves quite well, protect their energy, but their natural empaths, you know, they would, they would pick up on other people's energy and, and feel it as their own. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you also, you have Chiron, uh, Chiron is this, a small planet. Um, you know, it, it, rep it does represent our, uh, you know, Chiron represents our wounds, uh, where, where we've been hurt. But it also shows us where we can heal. We can heal others through our wounds or we can heal ourselves to a certain extent. So with Chiron being conjunct your Mercury, JP, um, you know, I would say that you felt when you were growing up, you felt completely bizarre and that your, your thought processes were so different to everyone's around you. Is that right? Uh, yeah. I mean, even, even now, <laughs> it's even now. I, yeah. Yeah. But to me, obviously, I think that's the way everybody should think. But, uh, that's, that's just, you know, everybody has that same perspective. Um, don't they? <laughs> Does everybody think that they, I mean, it's like going into, you know, you remember when you're a kid and you go into somebody else's house and like everybody else's family was weird and they did weird things. Does that happen or is that just me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I, I think you're right. You know, I, I know what you mean, but I think that if you're an awake person, it's, it's more, it's more painful and no, not, not everyone thinks like us. Um, oh. but it's, <laughs> it's interesting because you're using that, you know, you're using that Chiron Mercury conjunction by being on the radio and speaking openly about issues that, you know, other people would tend to keep hidden. Yeah, that, that is very true. 
Yeah. So that's the healing side of the wound coming out. You mm-hmm. know, you're you're using it to heal other people. Um, I do notice that you have that Saturn and Capricorn sitting right on the part of your chart that was your childhood. Miserable you? old git. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the old miserable old git transmission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, with that Saturn sitting there. You know, part of your childhood must have felt cold or you had a parent or authority figure in your life that that was an oppressive influence. Yeah. 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 Uh, And happens to be a Capricorn. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Makes perfect (laughs) sense. 14th of February. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, So you you have moon and Aries. You know, that, that shows me that you would be, you have a really good sense of humor. Moon and Aries people are, are always very funny, I find. Um, you can be quite imp- impulsive at times. Oh, don't, um, don't let me loose on, uh, Banggood or eBay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Especially with that Venus conjunction to your moon, mm-hmm. you may like to, you know, oh, you see something unusual that you want on eBay, so you just buy it and think about the consequences later and, you know, that type of thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking at... Uh, yeah, so this Chiron Mercury, what relationship does that have with the Leo um, Leo North Node? Here's, here's an interesting... Yeah, how can I... Well, I suppose... This is <laughs> this is what we're talking about. Isn't it? I'm just answering my own questions, but you know, you might have something to say about it, Fiona. Yeah. Well, you know, h- how does it relate to it? Well, you know, it's in, you know, it's very close to the south node in your chart, which is where you have come from karmically, not just in this lifetime, but in other lifetimes. I have noticed that people that have a very strong Chiron myself included, have been involved in, you know, shamanism, lifetimes as a, as a shaman, um, you know, as a healer. Uh, the the know, person who lives in the cottage outside the village. Yes, yes, you're totally spot on with that. The person that lives in the cottage that grows their own, their own plants, um, you know, the villagers are quite fearful of this person, but they still come to them for healing. That's the type of thing I see with Chiron people. Uh, so with Chiron, you know, Chiron people have had difficult lives, difficult childhoods, um, but they're they're usually quite, you know, they're quite gifted in some way. Have you ever explored shamanism, JP? <laughs> the very conversation I was having just before the show, actually, oh, we were talking okay. about. Um, uh, how what's for instance in ireland there was a name i mean they call them maybe a hedge witch or um uh a magus or um sorcerer what's what what's the word that you uh that you have in your tradition you know in, in coming coming from ireland and things like that what what's the word that you use um oh you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I suppose a, you know, a, a wise person or a, a witch or a shaman. Um, I'm not sure about the old-fashioned words that that would All have right, been used. I went to um, now. Where is it? Ennis, um, uh, Con, Con, Connemara, um, back in the 80s, and um, they had a person called a bone setter. You know, stuff like that, isn't it? Yeah, 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 stuff like that, you know, but also, you know, with a, a, sh- a shamanic Chiron type person, they would have, um, they would have been able to treat you for spiritual, you know, spiritual disease, um, and emotional, emotional problems as well. Um, yeah, so kind of like the witch doctor type of person. That's what I'm saying for, you know, many of your past lives. Really? That doesn't, yeah. that doesn't surprise me very much at all. How many past lives do you see that going that way? Oh, 
Um, it's it's very hard to be very specific about it, but I would say that you have been that type of that type of person and and 90% of your past lives, you know, to some extent, not always the person that lives in the cottage away from the rest of the village, but you know, someone that has always spoken with wisdom, someone that has always lived in in harmony with the earth. Uh you know, the, the natural clairvoyant type person. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that, that's pretty cool. And in terms of, you know, is this, like I was saying before, that my tendency is to, like, pick up random things and then put them together, assemble them in this kind of, oh, that's how that all fits together, uh, into a unified thing, which I've done with myself, because here I am, I couldn't be here at any other time doing this, because this never existed until a few years ago, did it? You know, the yeah. internet, people talking together, and other people listening and, and interacting back with them. This is magic. This is the best thing ever. You know, we have not been able to do this, you know, ever, have we? I think it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, I think it's amazing and, you know, at times it can, you know, it's pretty easy to feel like, oh, this planet is so tough, it's, it's really hard, you know, there are so many bad things that, that are happening, but there are some really awesome, awesome things about living today, such as, you know, being able to, to practice, well, in this country, being able to have this conversation with you and speak openly about our our spirituality and astrology, you know, in, in days gone by, we would have and, been... And not, not getting burned at the stake for it, which probably um, is all... So, yeah, let's talk about... Can you also see uh, the way I might have died in previous lives or something like that? Yeah, um... I, you know, I can see that, you see, this Saturn on the, on the IC of your chart, um, to me, w when I look at that, I, I kind of see images that you have always faced opposition from authority figures, you know, like the law, um, you know, the people that would have burned you as a witch, uh, the religious, highly religious figures, you know, I think that you have suffered from abuse, um, you know, you've probably lost lost your life a number of times um, because of this Saturnian restrictive influence that has been around the planet. C can you remember your past lives, JP? Um, there have been... I, I've had a couple of readings, um, and uh, I also uh, have had kind of... Yeah, well, I've had a couple of regressions, and one of them was to a parallel universe, which doesn't make sense anyway um but there was uh one where i was in um in nazi germany and i think a lot of us have because it's quite a recent thing um and uh, i was a jewish jazz musician but i had secret uh, esoteric knowledge um that they wanted to use for their time travel project wow okay yeah, that that goes along with that goes along with your Mercury and Pisces. You know, that would be a a musical ability. Um, but that's re that's really interesting. So, do, are you aware of your you know your death in that lifetime? I was born with this bald patch on my right temple, and uh, I've subsequently <laughs> um, intuited that uh, that was where I was shot. Um, and, uh, that, uh, also the person who did that is somebody that I have met and interacted with here in Findhorn. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, uh, this karmic interaction that happens here. It's like, oh, let's figure things out when we get to Findhorn in, uh, in this lifetime, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And your, your moon sign, JP, is an Aries and Aries rules the head. So that's pretty interesting. What a, I always get headaches. I always bang my head. I have literally cracked, 
uh, my, my, there's still a line there. Yeah, I'm just feeling as, yeah, I still got the line there where I, um, uh, flung myself into the, a door, uh, frame. <laughs> so it's like, so I, I, I'm always banging my head. Always get headaches. Yeah. Yeah, uh, your moon makes a square, you know, a challenging square aspect to Saturn, so you should, you should definitely be careful, JP. Take more care, please. <laughs> I should wear a hat at all times, really, because I, I have to say, a hat does tend to pr- protect me, so, um, maybe I should get some wolf spirit hats made. Uh, we're gonna get some merch going, some merchandise, and, uh, so, uh, this should be, uh, We'll, we'll, we'll get some good stuff out this year. Fiona, we've run out of time just when it was getting interesting. All about me, 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 me. Anyway, um, <laughs> we'll, do, uh, we'll talk more about you next time. If there is a next time, would you like there to be a next time? Absolutely. Yes. I've really enjoyed myself, JP. It's been fantastic. Thank you for having me on. Oh, that's brilliant. So, um, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let's look forward to hearing more Fiona Doig astrology. Scorpio Moon astrology, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Scorpio Moon karmic astrology. Scorpio Moon karmic astrology with a K at the beginning and a C at the end, right? That's right. Okay, yeah. that's good. Um, and uh, I suppose people could um, uh, also Google Fiona Doig astrology if they forget all that stuff. Yeah, of course, or they can just look me up on Facebook. And, uh, you're the same Fiona Doig astrology on Facebook? How do you, how do you get there? Well, well, if you want to look for my personal profile, you can just search for Fiona Doig and I should come up, you know. Excellent. So, thank you very much, Fiona. It's been, uh, a real, uh, it's been a lovely journey, I have to say. And, uh, I'm just struggling to find my mouse. There we go. And, there's the end. <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. Stand by for Frank Jordan and the World Healers Group. And uh, we'll see what's going on with uh, Frank and Stephen. Thank you very much, Fiona Doig. This has been Ever Beyond. Beyond, beyond.